Hey, this is Tim Ripper Owens, and you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. You, you stay pretty busy, huh? I just talked to somebody the other day at Leviathan. You're doing work with them as well. Yeah, you know, matter of fact, I was uh, singing a, a song here in the studio on one of, one of those songs right now today. So That's funny. I'm yeah. always doing – I'm in the studio doing something all the time. That's good. And, I mean, it's good to stay busy, especially during this last, uh, you know, last year that we've been through. So, Absolutely. All right. So let's just jump right into uh, KK's Priest. Obviously, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you would have been the first choice for, for to, to front this. But how did it come about, and was it uh, was it that easy to just jump right in? Well, it was. You know, we'd done a show. I think it was about 2019. Now I'm not even for sure when it was because we lost the whole year. So I think it must have been that. <laughs> Ken and I did a show, and uh, we had less. Les Binks was on drums at that show and Dave Ellison and AJ played guitar. And, you know, I think a ball started rolling then, you know, I mean, he, he did a show at uh, KK did a show at Bloodstock before that. I think he started getting the, you know, listen, I've seen Ken many times. He's gone to many of my shows throughout the years when I played in England solo shows I did. And he would, he didn't want to do it. You know, he was out of music and really didn't want to. I think when he got up, on stage at Bloodstock and guests on a, a song or two. Uh, I think he, he's, you know, he, that's when he knew he missed it. He wanted to go back and do it again, you know? And then we did that show. And I think when, when, when Ken realized he probably wasn't going to do the 50 year Judas priest thing, like they were going to do that. He realized, well, you know what? That's not going to happen. I think right. that's when he's like, you know what? I think it's time for me to, to do a record, you know? And I think that was it. I imagine the fans, even at your, when he showed up at uh, Bloodstock, went absolutely insane, right? Because, I mean, it's, you know, it's classic. I imagine, because, you know, KK doesn't do stuff like that, you know? Right. He, he spent his whole career doing Judas Priest. Right. You know, he didn't do solo records. He might have played a guest solo on somebody, something here and there, but he was never one of those people that did a lot of stuff. And really, either did, did Glenn or anybody else. Glenn did the solo record, but he's still... But KK was strictly Judas Priest, man. That's what he did and wrote his material for him, you know. So people, when they see him do something like that, yeah, they're going to be like, holy crap, man. This yeah. is great. What was the uh, whole writing process like? Was it uh, mostly a KK thing or did, were you involved in it? And then how did you get involved in it with all this pandemic crap? Was it mostly internet-based? Uh, it was It was Ken. You know, he he. I was on tour in England and he brought out some stuff he was writing this was probably February of 2020 <clears throat> and uh, it sounded fantastic. You know, AJ, the other guitar player did the uh, guide vocals on it. The thing about, about the record was it was vocally written for me. You know, these AJ's a big fan of, of my era, Judas priest and a uh, big fan of all this. So, you know, him singing the guide tracks were even thinking of me and, but, but Ken really wrote it thinking of me. I think Ken wanted to make a statement on like, I'm going to write this record and it's going to be kick ass. And right. Uh, but, w- but listen, I, I did all the vocals and the drums were all done before the lockdown hit right before the lockdown. Hit. Oh, I, really? I came back, I came back March of 2020 after doing my vocals. And, uh, then we found out AJ couldn't do it or, uh, Les Binks couldn't do the drums. We were like, man. And I said, I got a drummer and three trimmers and he's a drummer for cage. And this, this kid is phenomenal, man. He's so great and so professional. So Ken watched the videos and watched stuff and talked to him. He's like, yep. So they flew him out there and he got, he must have come home right when it was before lockdown because it was the, you know, first half of March as well. Right. So, uh, and then when all this hit, obviously you can't put a record out. So we had we really just stopped talking about it because you can't talk about something that you don't know when is going to come out, you know. So, right. But we, all the parts were recorded together and then Ken started changing things around. Then I re-recorded a lot of stuff here in my studio. Um, not a ton, but you live with stuff and you go, yeah, let's change this around. So I was fortunate that I was able to a couple like sermons of the center. I think all the verses I sang again here because originally they were raspier. Mm-hmm. 
uh, it was more of a raspier attack and a little power that way. And then we decided to do it a little bit cleaner. So I re-recorded them cleaner here. But uh, but most of it was recorded together. So we were pretty fortunate. Did you write it all together too? Were you over there during the writing process? Like as far as your lyrics and all that stuff go? Or were you? No, Ken had it all done. I mean, he was really him. It, he really strived to do this himself. And like I said, AJ was a big part of it. Um, probably even in the writing process, I, I imagine he was there a lot, a lot as well. And I mean, I'll tell you what, AJ can sing, and I'm like, holy crap, man! You <laughs> really, you're you're singing like Young Ripper there, my friend. Now remember, I'm a little bit older now, so let's right. just, let's watch what you're doing. That's kind of funny. Did you? Um, I mean, I guess the the Hellfire and Thunderbolts out, and the you know p- bits and pieces are leaking out here and there. What's the f- reaction been from the fans because i imagine it's great because you're you know you're part of the priest clan yeah i try not to read too much i mean if, if you probably go to a jewish priest only page probably you know hating on me like they always do but um uh it's been really good i mean uh, you know a, a good a good test of that is going to the youtube video of it you know because all kinds of people go to that so it's been really a, a good one you know I mean, well, I don't know what people are going to expect. There's some people, you can tell when people haven't followed my career at all, as I've been saying this in interviews, is they'll go like, wow, Ripper's singing high. I didn't know he could sing high like that. Or, uh, wow, Ripper's trying to sound like Halford. I'm like, listen, I've been singing for 30 years on right. this stuff, man. I mean, have you not followed any of my career at all? Right. Ice Dirt, Three Trimmers, I mean, Scream Machine, Winter's Bane before Judas Priest. This is how I sing, even in a wider range. I, I don't sound anything like how I mean, right. I don't know what this is how I sing. So, uh, so whenever somebody disses me for that, saying I'm trying to sound like something, or this is, I'm like, you've not even followed my career at all. I mean, right. you can't say that if you haven't followed somebody's career, you know. But it's been a great response. I mean, the songs and how you know, you they're written by KK Downing. I mean, I don't know what else you expect. This guy wrote right. Judas Priest songs for however many years. I don't know. 50, I guess. Right. So, ever. Right. Uh, and he's never done anything else. So this goes to show you this is how he writes. Most of the time, the only when someone does say negative, like, I wish you would have done something different. I'm like, but then again, if you would have done something different, then you would have hated that, too. I mean, he wrote like K.K. Downing. He didn't write like Judas Priest. He didn't write like anybody else you wrote like KK Downing. So the response is the majority of the responses has, has been really good. And it's, listen, we're not, we're not, you know, paving new roads here and right. it's not rocket science. We're doing what we do. Heavy metal. Right. And you're not reinventing the wheel. And I imagine he can't write any different than he writes. He just happened to write for priests for his, most of his career. So I mean, yeah, and you know what? He, I'm sure he can write different. Right. And this song has, a lot of different things going on i mean people hear one song then they hear the other song and they go oh my god it's just like this record or it's it listen there's a whole record still to go you got a whole record but right. kk's writing like i said kk's right kk downing likes to write period right. right what are you guys planning on doing is now that the world is opening up or is there kind of any plans to take this on the road or anything yet man i hope so uh I stopped booking solo shows and things after July 30th. So they better have something in the works. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I, there's no doubt about it. I mean, KK wants to get out there. He wants to play this stuff. When we talk about making a set list, I mean, all I've ever heard him talk about is playing this record. Um, yeah, we have great management. We have a great label that's behind us and, that's the plan is to do when it's opened up enough to do it. I mean, the problem is it's opened up enough now, but you have to book far in advance. I mean, sure. you just can't open up and then book a tour next month. Right. I probably can solo because I'm playing in smaller, smaller places. Right. You have to do it. You know, we have to do it right. Bam. So yeah, that's the plan is to do whatever we can to get out there on the big stages, whether it's going out there with another act uh, or other acts or, or just us. I mean, the plan is it's go out there and do it right. Okay. So one last question, getting back to uh, how this all the whole Genesis, what was it like to actually get the call and to be playing back with uh, Ken again? 
Well, it was great. I mean, like I said, I I played there several times, and Kim would always come out to my shows, and and we'd hang out. And like I said, AJ was with him, and this was the last, you know, eight years he'd come out, and he would drive hours to come out and hang out. You know, he and the thing is, he'd always bring a couple cases of beer. I I don't drink too much, but he he knows that the band members probably do. So uh, he would always bring a couple cases of beer and and you know put it on the, in the van in the trailer. Uh, but it was great. You know, the thing is, I'm pretty busy. So it wasn't like I was sitting at home with nothing to do. Right. That was the only issue at the time was, is I was touring with three trimmers. Uh, the deal hologram thing could have, was going to be coming up. Uh, so I had to pretty much say, uh, listen, I'm going to have to stop doing everything and be 100% with, with this. And that was the only issue. Could I do that or not? As great as this is, I still got to make a living, and I and I can make a living. I tour seventy five percent of the of of the year, you know. Right. Um. But I was I was one hundred percent for this. I was one hundred percent in on this. So I said to the management and everybody, I agreed to go. I'm totally in, and I was really excited. I was excited because I just like Hank. Listen, I got along great with everybody in Judas Priest. I still do. When I left Judas Priest, there was no bad feelings. It had to happen at that time for all of us, really, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we all got along. So that was that was the great part. And then Ken's so easy to work with. He's such a good friend that it was exciting to, uh, to just get back and hang out. I've always said the biggest thing I missed when I was out of Judas Priest was just hanging out with him. Right. Going to dinner, having a pint. Uh, talking on the bus, just hanging out was, was the best part, really. And uh, so that's what's going to be great is just hanging. He's such an easy guy to hang out with and have fun with, and the material is so great. So, But it was great. When he said, let's do it, I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. 100% in, right? 100% yeah. in. Well, I, uh, I appreciate you uh, doing it. I love the stuff. I can't wait for more of it. I'm hoping to see you guys over here at some point. I don't know if uh, like, yeah. if the if the states are involved in any of this yet because I know everything's still trying to be opened up and blah blah blah. But I appreciate you taking the time as well. Yeah, listen, we're pretty open. We're getting open here in America. It's pretty good. We're starting to get it rolling again, and uh, I'm ready to get there. And any other, you know, you need anything else? Any other time you want to chat or whatever, just get a hold of me, and uh, we'll hook it up. And you got any other questions? We're I'm here. I'm ready. Awesome, awesome. I appreciate it, Tim. Thank you very Thank much you. for everything. Thank you, my friend. That's all I have. You have a fantastic day. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot. Thanks, my friend. Take care. Bye, man. Bye, Bye, Jamie. Bye.